Hi, this is David Swanson at Democrats.com and AfterDowningStreet.org and ImpeachCheney.org. And I want you to imagine with me just for a second that it's seven years ago. And we've just elected a new president, actually elected, not appointed by the Supreme Court, a new president by one party or the other, doesn't matter. And we discover in the first few weeks in office that this new administration, our new vice president, our new president, newly appointed and, and confirmed cabinet officials are torturing people, are throwing out the law and treaties to which our nation is a part are throwing out the Eighth Amendment of our Constitution and are torturing people, are approving specific tortures of specific individuals and enacting them, dramatizing them in meetings. Imagine the shock, imagine the horror, imagine if you can back seven years worth of sitting in this pot of slowly heating water like frogs about to let ourselves be boiled and see if you can get yourself back to that point, as many more Americans can than our televisions tell us. We now know that there is a February 7, 2002 memo from George W. Bush declaring that the Geneva Conventions do not apply to the so-called War on Terror as regards the use of torture. We know that there is an FBI email from May 2004 obtained by the ACLU and released in December 2004 re revealing that George W. Bush signed an executive order approving the use of military dogs, of sleep deprivation, and of a variety of other tactics to intimidate Iraqi detainees in the so-called War on Terror. And we have Bush's recent comment to ABC News that he approved these discussions by Vice President Cheney and gang approving particular uses of torture. And we have always known that Rumsfeld had approved torture, that various high officials had approved torture, and it's incredible that we would even imagine that this happened without the approval of Cheney and Bush. We have photos, endless photos, and many accounts of photos the public has not yet seen of the torture that the United States has engaged in. We have countless witness accounts, endless victims, and victims' stories, and dead bodies. Uh, there, there are so many books now by victims of our torture. I, I'm reading a new book by Marat Kurnaz called Five Years of My Life, An Innocent Man in Guantanamo. And I don't know if I'm going to read the second half of the book because I've read the first half. And he and many others were brutally tortured, and in some cases murdered, at Kandahar Air Base in Afghanistan by the United States. Someone turned him in to us on the basis of no evidence whatsoever for $3,000. We were giving out money for people, suspecting nothing apparently. We electrically shocked him through his feet. We beat him repeatedly. We held his head under water. We hung him by his wrists until he lost consciousness. And all of this after weakening him with deprivation of nutrition and of sleep. And he saw others beside him die from these procedures. And this is before reaching Guantanamo, which he describes as far, far worse. I don't know if I'll read the second half of that book. And yet we have to face up to these facts. The Eighth Amendment of our Constitution says no Cruel and unusual punishments shall be used. This meant torture. The intention was to leave torture behind in England. Long-standing U.S. laws and treaties to which the U.S. is party ban torture. This has never been any secret. And yet, during the Bush administration, we have seen new bills passed recriminalizing torture and seen them signed into law by President George W. Bush. Remember the big Cheney versus McCain struggle in which the vice president for torture was openly lobbying Congress for loopholes to permit torture. And McCain was pushing the other side, pushing to recriminalize torture. And when the president signed it and wrote a little signing statement the next day and said, yeah, but we can torture if we want to, John McCain said almost nothing. And yes, by the way, among various other techniques, waterboarding, 
is torture. This is not a debate. Americans have gone to prison for waterboarding. We have prosecuted and convicted Japanese as war criminals for waterboarding. It has always been torture, will always be torture. And violations of the Bill of Rights, of the Constitution, acting in secret, violating numerous laws and treaties, these are impeachable offenses. And when the Congress has seen requests and subpoenas and contempt citations ignored and laughed at, when the Congress has seen its legislation thrown out with signing statements, there is nothing other than impeachment available. We must impeach. So call your representative, your member of Congress in Washington. There's one number to reach all of them. Just ask for yours. If you don't know who he or she is, tell the operator where you live and they will connect you. The switchboard number is 202-224-3121. If your Congress member is a Democrat, if your Congress member is a Republican, if your Congress member is an Independent, tell them we need impeachment. We need it to save our Republic. But if your Congress member is a Democrat, it couldn't hurt to add that impeachment hearings on torture and on signing statements would practically eliminate the possibility of John McCain being elected president. Let's do it. And why act like you care about the troops in Iraq? Cause if you did, you would let them fly back. It's cause of you them planes got hijacked. You also the reason Katrina victims had to die like that. They say you was hesitant, we say you was negligent. It's about time for niggas to end the president. Oh, yeah. Damn president.